Hey guys, Constance here from CosmopolitanCornbread.com. So today I thought I would take a few minutes to talk to you about something I've been getting a lot of inquiries about recently, and that is chickens. More specifically, your very first chickens. So if you are somebody who has maybe been thinking about getting their very first chickens, this video is going to share information that'll be just for you. And this little snuggle bug is Miss Ava. She is our one of our house kitties. So first of all, when you are wanting to get your very first chickens, the first thing that you need to do is make sure that where you live, you are allowed to have them. I'm gonna get on my soapbox a little bit here for just a moment. I have been in many groups over the years, Facebook groups and such, and I have seen so many people talk about how their HOA wrote them a letter or the city's come down on them because they had chickens in their backyard and they are not allowed to have them. And they were all upset and all of this nonsense. And quite frankly, if you're not allowed to have chickens where you live, you've got one of two options. Number one, move. I know that's not a realistic option for most people. So number two would be get involved with your city council, with your HOA, and see if you can get the ordinances or the regulations changed. That is the only thing you really can do because if you know you are not supposed to have chickens and you go and you get them anyways, that is not going to help your cause because it tends to reflect poorly on all chicken owners. And so you want to make sure that if you are going to get chickens, that you do it the right way. So now that we've got that covered, let's talk about the chickens themselves. Now, when you are getting your very first chickens, the first thing you need to decide is whether you want to get baby chicks or you want to get full grown hens or juveniles. There's a couple of pros and cons to both of them, and so I'm going to address those uh, for just a moment. So if you decide to get baby chicks, there's some really great benefits. First of all, you get to see how quickly they grow. Chicks are often more available in a variety of breeds, so you have more to choose from. And then depending upon how much time you spend with them, they could become very tame and pet-like, which is always fun. Now, something to keep in mind with baby chicks is, like I said, they do grow very, very fast. So if you decide to get baby chicks, you want to make sure that you have their chicken coop or enclosure or wherever it is that you plan on them living, have that ready before you even uh, get the chicks. I made that mistake when we bought our property here. I was so, so excited to be living in a place where we could once again have chickens that when we closed on the property, I went straight home and ordered my chicks and I put in my order. And so we had our chicks arrive just a couple of weeks later and I had not even built my chicken coop yet. And that was extremely stressful because we had a heat wave and it didn't matter. I had to be out there every single day working on that chicken coop to get it finished because the chicks grow really fast. It had been a few years since we had had them and I had forgotten how quickly they grow. So I, I highly recommend if you start with baby chicks, they're gonna grow faster than you think they will. So have their coop or their enclosure ready before you get them. Now another thing about baby chicks is if you start with those, you are going to need a little bit of extra equipment. You're gonna need a small environment for them to live in. My item of choice is a Rubbermaid tote because they are easy to clean and they're just the perfect size for keeping baby chicks in. Now you're also going to need something to keep them warm. You could use a heating lamp. Now instead of a bulb, you could also use a ceramic coil. That is something that I have used. You get those in the uh, reptile department of your local pet store or Amazon of course but what I prefer to use is an electric 
uh, brooder. It's a warming plate and it, it sort of mimics what a baby chick would do with a mama hen in that the baby chicks go up underneath it and they get warm underneath it and it gives them a place to feel sheltered and safe. And the other thing that I like about those electric brooders, there's, there's a couple different brands out there that make them, is you don't have the risk of fire like you do with a heating lamp. Chickens and chicks like to scratch and they can fling uh, wood shavings and stuff everywhere. And if something like that gets on a light bulb, it could cause a fire. And those warming plates let the chicks uh, regulate their heat much more um, efficiently and safely. Now, if you have children, uh, there is one thing that you might wanna think about with raising baby chicks. That is that they are very delicate. It is not uncommon to get a, a batch of chicks and lose one or two. It happens, it doesn't matter how experienced you are, how well you take care of those chicks, you can do everything right and sometimes you just lose one or two. So if something like that concerns you or you don't think your children could handle that, then you might want to think about whether getting baby chicks is the right option. Now another great question that I get asked is about the chicks themselves. When you go to your farm supply store, whether it's Tractor Supply or Rural King or your farmer's co-op, you'll see where they have all of these baby chicks and they will have what breeds they are and then you will see something that says straight run or it might be abbreviated by SR or you'll see the term pullets. And a great question that I get asked is what does that mean? Straight run simply means that as the eggs hatch, they gather them all up and they put them all together. It's straight from the incubators, hatched and shipped. They're not sorted, they're not sexed, and you don't know if they're male or female because they're just all mixed up. And I feel a cat hair on my face. I love you, Ava, but you shed a lot. <laughs> now, pullets is what you probably want to look for if you are wanting to raise chickens to have eggs because a pullet is very simply a young baby chicken that is a female that is not yet mature and is not yet to the stage of laying eggs. So when you go to buy the chicks, if you are wanting females, then that is the term that you want to look for. You want to make sure that they are sorted and that you are getting the pullets. Now that said, even if you are getting pullets, there is always a chance you could get an accidental rooster because while the chicks are sexed and sorted, it is never 100% accurate. So there is always a chance you may get a rooster. So keep that in mind as well because if you do get a rooster on accident, and you didn't want a rooster or you live someplace that you can't have roosters, then you'll need to have a plan of what to do just in case you get one. A lot of municipalities that allow people to have backyard chickens will have restrictions on not allowing roosters. And the reason they do that is because roosters don't just crow in the morning. They will crow all day, every day sometimes, they'll crow at three o'clock in the morning if they hear a strange sound because they are alerting the flock that, hey, there's something out there, what's out there? And sometimes you'll just have a crazy rooster that just crows all the time for no apparent reason. And they can be loud. And so if you live in an urban area and you're allowed to have chickens, a rooster probably is not something you would want to have even if your, your municipalities uh, ordinances don't clarify because your neighbors probably will not like that rooster crowing at two or three in the morning. Oh, and I almost forgot another benefit of starting with baby chicks is you will often have more variety to choose from when you are going to raise them from babies because not only do you have the ability to get them from your local farm supply store in the spring and usually in the fall, but you can order them through the mail. Yes, you can get baby chicks in the mail. I order my chicks from a company called McMurray Hatchery, uh, and they have a huge variety of different breeds uh, to choose from. But now whether you are getting them at your farm supply store 
or you are mail ordering them, there's always a minimum purchase. And that minimum purchase is for a variety of reasons. Uh, first of all, if they're in the mail, you want to have a number of chicks that are together for the body heat because baby chicks need to be kept warm. And if you are buying them from like your local farm supply store, your co-op, whatever, their minimums tend to vary. But generally the reason they do that, not only for the chickens to have a flock because they are social creatures and they need to have more than one, but they will also do that as a way of discouraging people to just come in and get one little chick to keep as a pet when they very well might not have uh, the knowledge or ability to care for it as it grows. All right, so that is the information about starting your flock, your first flock with baby chicks. And the other option is to start with some full grown or mostly grown juvenile hens or chickens. Now some of the benefits of starting with at least partially or full grown birds is that you don't have the added expense and trouble of the brooder and having a place for the chicks to grow and all of that. You just kind of skip over that step and go straight to having the birds. Because they're a little bit grown, you're also going to have less of a wait before you get the eggs that you are getting those chickens for. Now, even if you get full grown hens, there usually is a little bit of a wait before you get eggs because Chickens don't like change. They don't like new environments. And so you have to give them a little bit of time to get acclimated to where they live and get used to it. And then they will start laying once again. Now, if you get juvenile birds, uh, you still won't have the stage of going through the brooder and all of that but you will usually have to wait at least a couple of months before they begin laying eggs. Most chickens, depending upon the breed, will start laying eggs between four to eight months old. So the age of the birds when you get them will play a huge factor in how long it takes you to start getting eggs. And then the last thing I wanna talk about is breeds because that is another question that I get asked a whole lot. What kind of chickens do we have? What kind of breeds should somebody get depending on what it is they're looking for? Now we have had a variety of different breeds over the years. And when it comes to the different types of chickens, generally there's two camps. You have the meat birds, which are birds that will grow really, really fast and they are designed for meat. Then you'll also have the egg layers. The egg layers can often be smaller birds, but they are prolific in their laying and that's the reason you get them is for the eggs. But then there is a third version, which would be the dual purpose birds. Dual purpose birds tend to be a little bit larger, but they're great egg layers. And so sometimes people will get the dual purpose birds keep them for the first couple of years while they lay a whole lot of eggs. And then when they taper down and they're not really laying anymore, then they will uh, butcher them and use them as meat. Now, older birds do tend to be a little bit more tough. So you would want to do like stew or something like that out of them. Uh, but that is an option. So depending upon what it is you are wanting from your chickens, that should play a big role in what breeds that you get. Now we raise our chickens for the eggs and we like to have a variety of colors in our egg basket. We don't really care for the white eggs and so we will choose breeds that don't lay white, which by the way, that is what determines the color of an egg. It is the breed of the chicken. There are breeds that lay white eggs, there's breeds that lay brown eggs, there's breeds that lay blue eggs or green eggs. So depending upon what color of eggs you want, uh, can play a role in deciding which breeds. Now, as far as the quality of the eggs or the flavor of the eggs, the color makes no difference. It's really all about how that chicken lives, what it eats, how healthy is it. Those are the factors that determine the health and flavor of the eggs that you get, not the color of the shells. So some of our favorite breeds to have on the homestead are Wyandots. They come in all different colors. We currently have some blue laced red Wyandotte babies in the other room in the brooder. 
I've also raised silver laced Hawaiian dots. Those are brown egg layers just like the Rhode Island Reds which we have and the Cuckoo Morans, all brown egg layers. And then we've also had Americanas and Whiting True Blues. Those both lay blue eggs as well as some Whiting True Greens which lay a lovely sage green egg. We also have a few um, Silkies which are the poofy, fluffy looking little chickens and they lay kind of a small to medium white egg as well as some little Japanese bantams who lay uh, small white eggs as well. So we have a whole bunch of different kinds of chickens here on the farm. We just enjoy having the variety not only in the color of the egg basket but of the chickens that we see that get to live here. So I would recommend doing some homework checking out information about different kinds of breeds. You could use McMurray Hatchery's website, look at all the different breeds, see the information, see what kind of eggs they lay, how many eggs they lay, and make yourself a short list of the breeds that you would like to get. And then you can use that list when you go to your farmer's co-op or your farm supply store and see what they have. Usually at those types of places like Tractor Supply, you'll see Rhode Island Reds, you'll see Wyandots, you'll see um, Isa Browns or Red Rangers. Uh, so there's a variety of different ones that you usually see. Places like Rural King will have a huge selection of other breeds. But of course, if you want to order the chicks, you would get a larger number, but you would have many more breeds to choose from. Now, if you do decide to go ahead and get baby chicks, and it's your first time, I have an article on cosmopolitancornbread.com, which is my website that explains how to set up a brooder, how to make sure the temperature is right, and all of that. And I will link that article in the show notes down below this video or up in a card if you're watching this on the YouTube channel. So if you are new to my channel and you just found this video because you are looking at information on getting your very first chickens, I do about three videos a week on homesteading, home cooking, and back to basics. So if you like those sorts of things, be sure to hit the subscribe button and get all of the videos that I do here. And don't forget to check out my blog, cosmopolitancornbread.com, where I have hundreds of recipes and lots and lots of articles on homesteading, gardening, chicken keeping, and all of that. So thanks for joining me here today. My name is Constance from Cosmopolitan Cornbread, and I'll talk to you all next time.